Let's get more on one of those top stories now. Talking flying taxis, work has begun <laughs> on Dubai's first Vertiport. Joining us now on the line to give us more details is the CEO of the RTA's public transport agency, Ahmed Hashem Barusian. Good morning, Ahmed. Good morning, Richard. Thank you for having me. So give us the 30-second overview. What does this Vertiport look like? You were there, paint a picture. Yes, so this is going to be one of four vertiports that represent the first phase of the air taxi project, which hopefully we're planning to launch uh, before the middle of 2026. Uh, this is going to be our flagship vertiport, so it's um, uh, going to be very impressive in design. It's covering an area of about 3,000 plus uh, square meters. Um, it has two landing and takeoff pods, uh, a charging area because all our air taxis are fully electric. Um, and also has an adjacent parking uh, lot, um, uh, which can accommodate acro- approximately 300 uh, parking. So this will be our first station. The capacity is about 42,000 landings per year, and we're hoping to accommodate about 170,000 passengers annually um, in this uh, station. Uh, as I said, this is the first out of four stations. Uh, we're also going to have um, uh, Vertiport in uh, downtown Dubai. Uh, Dubai Marina um, and uh, Palm Jumeirah as well. Um, so uh, it's going to be a network of four stations to start the first phase of the project and then obviously expanding to other areas as the demand for the service increases. So it's an exciting development and congratulations on it, working with the guys at Skyports who are building the Vertiport and Joby Aviation who are building the flying taxis. But those numbers that you mentioned, at the moment, this is looks like a very niche part of Dubai's public transport infrastructure, which you run, of course. I was looking at the number of journeys last year on what you called shared mobilities, the, the metro, looking at buses, looking at taxis and so on. 700 million in Dubai, and this Vertiport's going to be able to cope with 170,000 passengers a year. It's not really moving the needle in terms of volume is the sense I get. How fair is that? Well, I mean, like any service, this is hopefully going to be the first air taxi service, maybe globally. So um, we want to take the lead, as Dubai usually does, uh, with innovative services. It's uh, very clean, uh, fully electric, which is the way to go with, uh, you know, sustainable public transport. Um, And you have to start somewhere. So for us, really, we want to lead the world. Uh, We want to start uh, on a smaller scale. Uh, But we have big ambitions for the service. This is only the beginning. 2026 is only the beginning. Um, we expect with the reduced uh, travel times and also a pricing strategy which will make um, the service not just available for, you know, um, wealthier people or people who are, 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 are business people and tourists. No, we want it to be really priced so that's available almost to everyone uh, in the city. So uh, today we have, if you take a benchmark of what is the price of an average Uber and, and Kareem uh, trip, this is going to be somewhat similar. Now, it may start off a little bit more expensive because obviously building these aircraft initially will be quite expensive. But with any new technology uh, and with the economies of scale, the prices tend to come down as well. So we have big plans for this service. Yes, it's going to start on a smaller scale, but uh, we definitely feel that it's going to become an important part of the mobility ecosystem in Dubai going forward. We've had a number of questions coming in about air traffic control for these flying taxis across Dubai. If and when this does scale up, how many could the skies in Dubai take? Well, I mean, uh, you mentioned our two key partners for the project, our international partners, Skyports and Joby. We also have a a big list of local partners who are working very closely with us on these projects. uh, probably the most important ones, obviously, are the va- aviation authorities, the Dubai Civil Aviation and the General Civil Aviation Authority. So we are working very closely with them uh, to identify the, uh, obviously, certify the aircraft to operate in Dubai, as well as identify the routes um, uh, and, and all the details that are outlined. So we don't envision that there's going to be an issue with, uh, you know, uh, the growth of the service. We are going to have enough uh, bandwidth for that. And uh, the aviation authorities are very much aligned with that uh, approach as well. Could this go into Emirates, Ahmed, or is it going to be very much within Dubai? Okay, so um, maybe it's important to talk a little bit about the aircraft. So the aircraft that we're going to operate is called the Joby S4. Um, It is, as I said, a fully electric aircraft, four passengers, uh, as well as a pilot. Um, It can fly to speeds up to 300 plus kilometers per hour. Um, and also it has a range of over 160 kilometers an hour as well. So, sorry, 160 kilometers. So, uh, we purposely chose a vehicle that is able to uh, entertain intercity trips. 
so the service will probably start within Dubai, but we are very excited about the potential of collaborating with the transport authorities in other Emirates to also conduct intercity flights. And as I said, the aircraft is capable of doing that. I like the idea of taking one up to Hatta as well. That's a two hour drive at the moment. 160 kilometers would certainly get us there. If we put this in, in the wider context of what's happening with transportation in Dubai at the moment, I read comments from your colleague, His Excellency Mata Altaya of the RTA. He has other roles as well, talking about the potential of trying to reduce congestion on Dubai's roads at the moment and going forward through things like flexible work and remote work. Where does this initiative fit in with that wider context? Well, obviously, the uh, the big, uh, if you like, attraction of this service is going to be reducing the travel time for people who are willing to take the trip. So um, as an example, um, it will take approximately 12 minutes to uh, fly from Dubai International Airport Station to the uh, Palm Jumeirah. Uh, whereas by car it could take anywhere up to 45 minutes plus. So the main attraction of this service is going to be the reduced travel times. And as, as you said, that it even becomes more attractive when you have longer trips like, you know, intercity trips as well. So um, as I said earlier, uh, we're starting on a smaller scale because it's a very uh, new service. And obviously we have to, uh, you know, uh, ensure that uh, the operations is right uh, or the safety measures are taken, etc. However, as I said, we believe uh, if we get the pricing right, if we get the uh, operations right, that this could become an important part of mobility in, uh, in Dubai. And it won't just be a small service that only a small group of people are using uh, daily. Lots of questions coming in very quickly. Priyanka writes in, I am concerned about safety, not just if I was flying in one of these, but what if the battery packs up mid-flight and it falls to the ground? How do you address those safety fears? Okay, so as I said, obviously, uh, the, uh, the, the safety authorities or the aviation authorities are, are uh, important partners for us. Um, the certification process, I'm not an expert in certification, but I can assure you that the certification process for these aircraft is extremely high. Uh, it's very strong, uh, and therefore, obviously, they will not be certified uh, unless they pass all the, certif the safety requirements. Um, uh, in addition to that, the... Uh, the aircraft is actually a lot safer than helicopters uh, just by design. It has six rotors, for example, that are completely redundant. Um, it's extremely quiet, extremely quiet, I'm over 100 times quieter than helicopters, obviously, because it's going to do urban uh, flights and uh, sound is a very important aspect of that. Um, so uh, obviously, when we do launch the service, this aircraft will be certified. The certification process is equivalent to certifying commercial aircraft. So really, it is uh, safety would probably be the least of our concerns. Ahmed, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Dubai's first vertebral work has begun, opening 2026. The thoughts of Ahmed Hashem Barosian, CEO of the RTA's Public Transport Agency. Dubai Eye, Wild 3.8. Join the conversation.